A document from 1912 recently came up for auction in Britain. It's a menu dated from April 11th. It features first-class delicacies like spring lamb, mallard duck, Victoria pudding. It sold for more than $100,000 despite being water-stained, and the reason why is because it was from this ship. Possibly the world's best-known maritime disaster, the RMS Titanic sank in the North Atlantic four days after that menu was issued. Other artifacts in the auction that fetched more than $100,000 included this blanket. It was from one of Titanic's lifeboats, and a pocket watch that belonged to a Russian immigrant also sold. The owner died in the shipwreck, but his wife was rescued. The Titanic wreck site was located in 1985 after 73 years on the ocean floor. Researchers have been closely documenting the remains of the liner. It's rapidly deteriorating. Hi, I'm Carl Azus. This is The World From A to Z, the first of two shows we're producing this week ahead of the Thanksgiving break. As we were putting this one together, news broke that former U.S. First Lady Rosalind Carter had passed away at age 96. She was an activist, an advocate, an author, and the wife of the 39th U.S. President Jimmy Carter, who served in that role from 1977 to 1981. Their marriage lasted more than 77 years, which is the longest of any American president's. And when asked what he was most proud of in his life, the former U.S. leader responded, it was marrying Rosalind. Born in Plains, Georgia on August 18, 1927, she was valedictorian of her high school class and met and married Jimmy Carter when he was in the U.S. Navy. When Mr. Carter's father died in 1953, they moved back to Plains to manage the family's peanut farm. I didn't want to go home. <laughs> I was having a good time. Um, I think I had thought I had outgrown Plains, Georgia. I was, had gotten a little too big for my britches. I only pouted for about a year after we got home. <laughs> they had four children, three boys, Jack, Chip, and Jeff, and later daughter Amy. In 1962, Jimmy Carter entered politics and Rosalind hit the campaign trail. Campaigning was fun, up to a certain point, because I got to travel and see the whole country. The most fun are the people you meet. She supported her husband's successful bids to become governor of Georgia and later president of the United States. So help me God. Congratulations. Mrs. Carter was actively involved in her husband's presidency, attending Camp David meetings and cabinet briefings. She was a strong advocate for equal treatment of the mentally ill. When the Carters left the White House in 1981, they spearheaded a new challenge, Habitat for Humanity, building houses for the poor. The whole community has come together to, to get rid of poverty. A year later, they established the Carter Center, a foundation devoted to promoting human rights, resolving conflicts, and eradicating diseases. Another focus, caregiving, an issue close to her heart as she told a congressional committee. It's been part of my life since I was 12 years old. Um, and my father was diagnosed with leukemia at age 44. In 1999, Rosalind and Jimmy Carter were honored with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest honor for civilians. Rose and I have visited now more than 115 nations in the world. Mrs. Carter was often irritated that her husband was praised more for his achievements after his presidency than those of his administration. But she accepted that was politics. She remained by his side, occasionally joining with other first families, and later supporting each other in their twilight, she with dementia and Mr. Carter in hospice. And in the 39th president, Rosalind Carter got more than just a husband. My life with Jimmy Carter has been more adventuresome than I ever dreamed it would be. One big thing we're thankful for this week is you. And we're shouting out Mrs. Calendars or Calendars or Calendars class today. Freedom High School in Woodbridge, Virginia is here. Great to see you. Also making a stop in Rocky River, Ohio, where the pirates are watching. Hello to Mr. Purdy's and Mr. Smith's classes at Rocky River Middle School. A world of knowledge. The genus Equus includes what two animals? Horses and hippos, elk and donkeys, zebras and moose, 
donkeys and horses. When you're talking about the genus Equus, you're talking about donkeys, horses, and zebras. And a recent study found that two of those animals have made important contributions to the ecosystem of the Sonoran Desert. It covers part of the southwestern United States and northwestern Mexico. A wildlife biologist made some fascinating findings after hiding some cameras in the region. Horses and donkeys have been great partners to humans for most of history, but they're not usually thought of as being very helpful to the ecosystem. Now, a new study shows that in the desert lands of Arizona and California, they're actually great partners to other animals, even plants. How? By doing this, digging deep wells that leave a water source in arid regions. Biologist Eric Lundgren knew that African elephants dig wells, creating some important watering holes for other creatures during the dry season. He wanted to know if horses and donkeys do the same in North America. His team surveyed sites in the Sonoran Desert. They were surprised to find wells up to six feet deep, dug by the hooves of horses and donkeys. A variety of animals were caught on camera taking advantage of the water holes. Mule deer, bobcats, javelinas, and birds like the woodhouse scrub jay. And that's not to mention the plants that spring up. Biologists say the wells decrease the distance animals have to travel to other water sources. That's especially important in the heat of the summer when desert streams can dry up. On this date in world history. November 20th, 1820, an American whaling ship named the Essex was rammed and sunk by a whale. Of the ship's 20 or 21 crew members who survived aboard smaller whaleboats, only eight were still alive when they were rescued five months later. The incident inspired the novel Moby Dick by Herman Melville. This was the date in 1962 when the Cuban Missile Crisis was officially considered over. The U.S. lifted its naval quarantine on the island on November 20th after Soviet missiles had been removed from Cuba and America had promised not to invade the communist island and made other agreements. The extreme tension of the previous month had brought the two world powers to the brink of nuclear war. And this date in 1985 marked a milestone in technology when Microsoft began shipping Windows 1.0, the first graphics-based operating system for personal computers. Prior to that, computer commands were mostly based on text. At the University of Tulsa, a private school in Oklahoma, housing rates are between four and $6,000 per semester. But that's not the case for a couple music students the sounds filling this senior center aren't just for fun. It's how these college kids pay their keep, quite the musical and lifestyle arrangement. It's an opportunity, again, to like spread the love of music um, and spread the joy of music. Tulsa University music students Chance Jackson and Sean Roberts don't live in a dorm. They live at Montero, a senior community where they get free room and board as they crank out classical concerts and provide company for the residents. Befriending a lot of the residents here. Um, that's been the most like significant part of it, I think, and that's the part that matters the most too, actually, I'd say, is, is forging that connection. And of course, this added bonus. I can't tell you the amount of times I've heard the phrase, isn't it nice to have three grandmas? Besides roast turkey, there are plenty of turkey products that get the spotlight this time of year. Fried turkey slice, turkey ground, turkey, turkey stuffing, turkey meatballs, turkey bacon, turkey gravy, turkey meatloaf, turkey casserole, to name a few. But this is something new. The Baskin Robbins Ice Cream Company decided to take turkey and run with it all the way to dessert. It's not supposed to actually taste salty or gamey like wild turkey. Rather, it's reportedly based on Thanksgiving side dishes like sweet potato, honey cornbread, cranberry sauce, and autumn spice. So it's been named Turkey Day Fixins. Snooty dessert connoisseurs who partridgedly stick to pie might grouse about it, call it foul, and turn up their beaks. But if it sounds pheasant to you, maybe you'd be fixing to fly, trot, or waddle to your local ice cream shop and turn the tables to gobble it all up. I'm Carl Azus. The world from A to Z will be big tomorrow before we're off for the Thanksgiving break. Thank you for watching. You mean the world to us.